Welcome to Pine Island United Methodist Church.
queremos servirte y queremos seguir pidiendo la vez. Pero tu poder, Señor, es mayor que nuestra debilidad y confusión. Señor, diciéndole que no, que no se afane, que no se preocupe, que tú estás con ella, que tú no hablas la base de algo. Can anyone tell me what this means? Disappointment haunts my every dream. Nobody talk about it. Sun and clouds all fade to gray. I dreamt it was all a big mistake So nobody talk about today Hey, Dad, what you doing with that orange backpack? Well, I'm about ready to, to shoot a, a children's message video. Imagine that, there's a camera right there. But um, before we do the children's message, um, Mom wants us to move her flower barrel from Caledonia, kind of center here. So I'm just let me see if I can move it myself. Uh, I can't, can you help me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you, man. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of Jesus. Can you imagine that? Nope. <laughs> you know, Jesus said, come to me, you who are carrying heavy loads and carrying heavy burdens, and, and I'll give you rest. And sometimes when we go through life, it's nice to have Jesus with us to kind of help us through life. He's offered to be with us, and Jesus is just really neat that he helps us through hard times. Sometimes even if we're angry, he helps us with our angry. Um, if we're lost, he helps us find our way. So Jesus is really good in how he helps us when we need help. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, Ben, let's pray. All right. Okay, let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. We thank you. We thank you. For Jesus. For Jesus. And how he loves us. And how he loves us. Help us remember. Help us remember. That you're always there. That you're always there. To help. To help. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, well thanks, man. No problem. Time to go do my children's message. Oh, my orange backpack. What do you got in there, Dad? Well, imagine that. I just happen to have... Some Tootsie Rolls for you. Oh, wow. There's a deal. 
There you go. You can go whenever you're ready. Matthew 11, verses 16 to 19. To what will I compare this generation? It is like a child sitting in the marketplaces calling out to others. We played the flute for you, and you didn't dance. We sang a funeral song, and you didn't mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. Yet the human one came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunk, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved to be right by her works. And the second reading is Matthew 11, 25 through 30. At that, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you're, you've hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have shown them to babies. Indeed, Father, this brings you happiness. My Father has handed all things over to me. No one knows the Son except the Father, and nobody knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wants to reveal him. Come to me, all you are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Put on my yoke and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. In last week's sermon, my first sermon here, you got to hear a little bit about me. This week, even though I'm still in the process of meeting all of you, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about you. But first, a, a tiny bit more about me. I don't always wear an alb in a stole, but today is a Sunday in which we celebrate something very special. When we celebrate special things in church, we have a special name for them. They are called sacraments. They're called sacraments because they are sacred or holy or set apart from more ordinary things. So because today is a Holy Communion Sunday, well, I'm dressed up in my clergy clothes. Now, some of us will be joining together at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning and having the Sacrament of Holy Communion together at the same time. So, with that said, well, let's start talking about you. Even without meeting all of you yet, I know that you are a congregation of people who know Jesus and who love Jesus. Many of you, maybe even most of you, have committed your life to Jesus Christ. You have confessed Jesus Christ as your Savior. You are learning how to put your whole trust in his grace. And you have promised to serve him as your Lord. Now, each of these phrases from our baptism liturgy, they're worth a sermon and a half each at least. But today, I want us to look at the third phrase. We promise to serve Jesus as our Lord. When we serve someone as our Lord, that means that we do what they ask. So if I'm serving someone and they say, hmm, I'm thirsty. Would you please get me a glass of water? Well, what would I do? You know, I'd get him a glass of water. So, as servants of Jesus Christ, we do the things that Jesus desires us to do. Now, the things that Jesus asks us to do can be listed as, well, a, pretty, a couple pretty simple things. Like, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and soul and mind and strength. And, well, love your neighbor as yourself. In the hours before Jesus died, he, he kind of doubled down on that love your neighbor as yourself part. See, at the Last Supper, after he washed his disciples' feet, Jesus said, I give you 
a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you also should love each other. This is how everyone, everyone will know that you are my disciples when you love each other. So from Jesus, we have the great and first commandment, love God. And we have the second, which is like it, that sums up all the law and the prophets, love your neighbor. And then we have this new commandment that, that Jesus adds to the ones that God gave Moses to love each other as much as Jesus loves us. And then, well, there's the Great Commission. These are the words that Jesus gives as his last words in the Gospel of Matthew. If you remember, Jesus died, he was resurrected, and now he's meeting his disciples up in the region of Galilee. And we hear Jesus came near and spoke to them. And he said, all authority of heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Look, he says, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. You know, this is from where we get our mission as a church. You know that mission. To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. So, even though I've not met everybody in the congregation yet, I know what you're a part, what you're about. You see, you are in the disciple-making business. And here's the cool part. You know, there are a ton of people who Jesus is just waiting to get to know him. And our mission, it's to help make this happen. And here's the part that, that's just really cool. You see, God has already given this congregation everything that we need to fulfill this world-transforming mission. I'm not kidding here. This is serious stuff. It's true. You see, not many of us have realized this yet. But God has already given us everything we need to fulfill this God-given mission. So, now on, today's, on to today's message from the Gospel of Matthew. You see, we already have the best offer in the world to pass on to those persons who are looking for something special that's missing in their lives. Think about it. For those in our Pine Island community who, who struggle hard, those who, who carry heavy loads in their life, whether they be physical loads or, or even emotional loads, those who need a rest and a break from all that life is throwing at them, well, we have the privilege of passing on the best offer in the world. So let's hear from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus is speaking, and he says, Come to me, all you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Put on my yoke and learn from me. I'm humble and gentle, and you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. So, so in this world that is filled with, with struggle and uncertainty, in a world with more than its share of worry about well, COVID-19 and injustice and oppression and economic struggles and concerns, in a world like this, we have something to offer to help persons make it through these difficult times. 
Come to me, all you who struggle and who are struggling hard and, and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. What a great message to pass on. It is the, the best offer in the world. But you know, we have done our best throughout the centuries and even throughout the millennia to make it more complicated than that. Let's look at the verse that leads up to this. Again, from Matthew. Jesus says, My Father has handed all things over to me. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wants to reveal him. Hmm. So, so what is Jesus saying here? No one knows the Father except the Son and anyone whom the Son wants to reveal him. Is Jesus' message only for those who Jesus wants to reveal it to? For centuries in the church, we have been having this debate about predestination, okay? In other words, it's a debate about who gets to be saved. Is it just the people who God has chosen from, from the beginning of time? Are they, are they the only ones that can be saved? Or, or is the guest list to the kingdom of God something else? Now, in the interest of simplicity, I'm going to paint here with, with some pretty broad brush strokes, okay? So take this with a grain of salt, but, but persons in the Reformed tradition of the church, they would suggest that only the predestined, only those pre-chosen by God, make it into heaven. Huh. And, well... Our Jewish ancestors at one time would say that, that the chosen people, God's chosen people, were tied to ancestral heritage going back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, as Methodists, as persons as a part of the Wesleyan faith tradition, we would suggest that, that everyone is invited. And that each of us needs to make a personal decision to claim Jesus as our Savior. A personal decision to follow Jesus as our Lord. So again, I'm, I'm painting with really broad strokes here. But the question of, of who gets invited into the kingdom, well, it is, it is an important question. And in our United Methodist denomination, Guess what? It's still being debated, even now. So first, I want us to think about our church motto here at Pine Island. Okay, remember? Love, hope, a place to belong. Right? Remember that? Well, the question is, who gets to belong here? Who gets to follow Jesus? You see, once we decide this, then our ministry begins. Um, Fred Craddock was a well-known, just fantastic preacher of his day. Um, he also taught preaching at our Candler United Methodist Theological Seminary, Seminary down at Emory University. Okay? So Fred Craddock used to put it this way when he pastored a church. He said, we only turn away those whom Jesus turned away. Hmm. Remember, he's preaching down in Atlanta in the middle of the civil rights era. And he's saying, we only turn away those who Jesus turns away. So, so who did Jesus turn away? No one. And this brings us back to, to John Wesley and our Methodist heritage. You see, Wesley preached not just to those in the church, but but especially to those outside the church, in open fields and in city marketplaces. Not just to the good church folk in the pews, mind you, but especially to the coal miners and the factory workers, 
to all those who were struggling hard and carrying heavy loads. Wesley preached to and he built the Methodist movement of the mid-1700s on people just like this. So the question is, who did John Wesley love? Huh? Guess what? He loved the people who Jesus loved. John Wesley, an, an Anglican priest, even considered that the sacrament of Holy Communion, the sacrament of Holy Communion, it was a converting sacrament, as he called it. Not reserved for those just and already in the church, but even a mode of invitation and welcome by Jesus himself to those who were outside, to those who needed emotional and, and spiritual rest. That's why we practice what we refer to here as, as an open table for Holy Communion. The communion table in the United Methodist Church is open to all. Not just people who are members of this congregation. Not just the people who are United Methodists. But it's open to all. Even people who don't belong to any church are welcomed at our United Methodist open table. Isn't that wonderful? This table is open to all, to everyone whom Jesus invites when he says, Come to me, all you who are struggling hard and, and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Put on my yoke and learn from me. I am gentle and humble. And you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. And friends, I got to tell you, this is the best deal in the world. Now, as we prepare for communion, and again, it's going to take place at a different time than you're probably watching this. Um, but at 9 o'clock, as we gather for communion, um, in preparation for that, I want to offer the invitation that we offer in the United Methodist Church whenever we have communion. And again, in the United Methodist Church, we practice an open table. Everyone who is present in our sanctuaries on a Sunday morning, um, anyone who is tuning in with us as we prepare for Holy Communion together, everyone is invited to the table, regardless of church membership, regardless of whether you belong here or any place else, everyone is invited. I also got to tell you, it's not me who invites you, but it's Jesus. And Christ invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us come to the table together. Amen.
we might offer this, this, this wondrous love of yours to the world. Lord, we ask all these things in the name of the one who gives so much to us, Jesus. And we pray together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to uh, give of ourselves as forgiven and reconciled people. We offer our very lives, we offer our gifts for the ministry of the church. This represents um, all of your online gifts, um, also the gifts that have been mailed to the church throughout the week. Um, even though the, the sanctuary is practically empty, um, your gifts and your support of the church come in. So as we offer these gifts to God, let us sing together our doxology. <laughs> Thank you. 
let us receive our blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. I stopped it. That's okay. Yep. I put my paper down. <laughs> Ready? Yep. And let us praise.